There's a call out over the nets that we are moving forward into strong back retract. The next thing you might be able to see on your screen is actually gonna be the clamp arms opening up around the base of the second stage. That will allow the strong back to recline about two degrees away from the vehicle. And because we've now begun pressurizing Falcon 9, we know that it's strong enough to stand on its own. That TE will throw back all the way to 45 degrees at liftoff. The strong back is part of the transporter erector, which provides liquids, gases, and electrical connections to the vehicle. There you can see those clamp arms have fully opened around the base of just the trunk of Dragon on stage two. And so the next major milestone that we're tracking today is stage one locks load being complete. We expect that call out at about three minutes when that first stage locks load will be completely finished. So all those white clouds of vapor you see on your screen right now are normal and we'll continue to see them build up as we get even closer to launch. Because liquid oxygen is super chilled, it boils off a little bit in the warm Florida air. And then for the call out that stage one locks load is complete. Stage one locks load complete. There's the confirmation that we have completed loading liquid oxygen on board stage one, but locks will still be loading for about another minute on board stage two. Then we'll prepare to vent down the TE, which is going to produce another white Dragon cloud. Dragon is in terminal count and is on internal you may also power. Hear. There's confirmation that Dragon is on internal power. You may also hear an announcement to the crew about that venting procedure. So everything continuing to go as planned this evening. We are now two minutes and 20 seconds away from the launch of crew eight. Standing by in about 15 seconds, we should hear the call out that the second stage locks load is complete and that Dragon is in auto idle. Stage two lock load complete. And with that, you did hear that locks load is complete. Gas closeout has also begun. So we're now isolating all the feed lines for Dragon the different gas systems from idle. the Falcon 9 rocket. They'll then get... Great news, continuing to move towards launch. And Dragon you could even hear some of those gases ending. being vented over just shortly. And you can hear it even better now. Something else you might see here in a few moments is water being poured onto the pad because rockets are super loud. The sound can impart loads back on the rocket itself. So that water helps absorb and prevent the sound from hitting the structure and reverberating back onto the rocket. FTS Coming up on one Falcon minute until launch. Dragon is in countdown. The flight termination system is armed and we are in Dragon, countdown. SpaceX, go for launch. Five seconds. Dragon copy, go for launch. Let's go, crew reports go. Now about 30 seconds away from liftoff.
nominal power and telemetry. And we are getting good call outs on propulsion. Falcon 9 engines now throttling down to help pass through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Stage back, throttle up. One Bravo! So with that call out, Copy one Bravo. we know that Falcon 9 is throttling back up. And that one call out for one Bravo means that we are in the second and final abort mode for the first stage, continuing to get good performance from Falcon 9. Now at this Back point, the crew started. are already pulling over two Gs. And with that call out, we know that that engine chill for MVAC, which is our second stage engine, has now also begun. That also means we have a couple of events that are going to happen in rapid succession. First is that chill on the MVAC engine, and then we'll have main engine cutoff, or MECO, where the nine engines on the first stage of Falcon 9 will cut off ahead of first and second stage separation. Then the Merlin vacuum engine on board the second stage will ignite and carry the crew eight astronauts to orbit, while the first stage begins its journey back to Earth. At this point in the flight, the nine Merlin stage engines are starting to throttle down, and we're standing. There's that call out for st for throttle down, and we're standing by by for Miko. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And back in there. <laughs> Copy through Alpha. So those incredible views on your screen, and of course the cheering behind me means that we have had successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, and ignition of our MVAC engine on board stage two. We are also in two alpha for the aborts if needed. Of course, that second stage is being illuminated on the right-hand side of your screen by our single Merlin vacuum engine on board stage two. Now the next milestone we're tracking is the stage one boost back burn on the left-hand side of your screen. And we are expecting completion of that burn in just about 10 seconds. And so crew eight is now traveling at over 4,000 miles per hour. We're continuing to get good call outs, everything going really smoothly today. That second stage will continue firing until we reach about eight minutes into the flight. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Dragon. Good performance on the lone Merlin vacuum engine on, on the second stage. The crew's G-load dips right when we hit the separation event, and it's going to continue to build up now. Again, we just heard another call out for nominal trajectory. That was the guidance, navigation, and control officer stating nominal trajectory or everything is looking good. Dragon is pointed in the right direction, continuing its flight uphill. This second stage will continue to fire until a little over eight minutes into the flight, accelerating Dragon to more than 17,000 miles per hour and placing the crew in orbit. Right now, the crew is traveling at 4,500 miles per hour and is over 93 miles in altitude. That single Merlin vacuum engine can produce over 220,000 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of space, and you really see it doing the heavy lifting right now. So while Crew-8 continues on its way to the International Space Station, the first stage booster is on its way back to landing Dragon zone SpaceX, one. trajectory nominal. Confirmation Dragon. there that the trajectory for both vehicles is looking good. Now the first stage has a couple of events itself in order to land. At T plus six minutes and 16 seconds, stage one will begin its entry burn, which will be the first of two burns prior to landing. During this burn, Falcon 9 will ignite only the center engine for about 10 seconds in order to slow the vehicle down before it reaches the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. That will be followed by the landing burn at T plus 7 minutes and 21 seconds. This time, we'll light three engines, and the burn will last for about 20 seconds, ending just about a minute before we expect Dragon to be inserted into orbit.
And so we did also hear a couple of different Greg, ground station Greg, call outs like Bermuda. Uh, that is one of the ground Greg. stations that we're receiving telemetry from and everything continues to look really good with the trajectory. The crew now traveling over 6,000 miles per hour. Again, this second stage will continue to light for a couple more minutes before second engine cutoff. At that point, the vehicle will coast for a few minutes before separation. And it looks like we're starting to get some views of the Florida coast there on the first stage as it continues to make its way back to Earth. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Dragon. Continuing to get good call outs, everything going smoothly. Now almost seven minutes into the flight of crew eight. So the next milestone we're standing by for is stage one landing burn start. Again, as stage one approaches the space coast to touch back down at landing zone one. Stage two FTS is safe. And it is great to see that first stage back on Earth coming up. Next on the second stage is second engine cutoff. You can hear some excitement here at Hawthorne at SpaceX headquarters as that first stage successfully landed back on Earth. So second engine cutoff will take place here in just a couple of minutes. Once the lone Mer Merlin engine cuts off and stops firing, the second stage will continue to coast for about three minutes until Dragon is commanded to separate. At this point, Dragon will separate from the second stage and will fly free with crew eight still on board and in orbit. Shannon. Copy, Shannon. And that call out for Shannon, indicative of Shannon, Ireland, the very last abort zone in the second stage. The Merlin engine is about to shut down. You just saw it there on your screen. Dragon SpaceX, nominal orbit insertion. Dragon Hearing copy. good call outs following second stage cutoff. The crew is Watch in a nominal or far. as expected orbit. That is that is great news. That launch escape system. And we are getting our first view of crew eight inside Endeavor. Three of them in space for the very first time. So again, we'll continue to coast for these few minutes after that second stage just shut down. This helps to allow rates and motion to settle out. There are actually small reaction thrusters on the upper part of the second stage that can be used to counteract any residual motion, basically making sure that we're in a stable coast before Dragon separates from Falcon. We expect that separation here to, to occur at about the 12 minute mark into the flight. So again, we did hear that the crew has been successfully inserted into a good orbit. This is the crew in microgravity, three of them for the very first time, all good call outs. So right now, the second stage is performing a series of checkouts as we prepare to separate Dragon from stage two. 
And so we will see that separation coming up in just a couple of minutes, after which a number of activation checkouts occur automatically. First, we'll be checking out 12 of the Draco maneuvering thrusters all around the service section of the Dragon spacecraft. And then we'll also begin to get ready for nose cone opening. Nose cone stays closed for the flight uphill to help protect all of those guidance, navigation, and control sensors. It also covers four of the Draco thrusters that will be used for the majority of the different phase burns requiring Dragon to catch up to the International Space Station. So we are standing by for Dragon separation to occur here in just about 30 seconds from now. Of course, the view you have right now on your screen. Oh, actually, now that our view has transitioned, you're getting a great view of Dragon's heat shield. This camera is on top of stage two and looking up into Dragon's trunk. So if you're just joining us this evening, we had a successful launch of Crew-8. They're on their way to the International Space Station. The first stage has already returned to Earth and landed successfully, and the second stage has shut down and we're awaiting separation, and you see it on your screen right there. Dragon, Dragon and that. Endeavor now flying free. Dragon, SpaceX, this is your launch chief engineer. Go ahead. Welcome to orbit. Uh, it truly is our greatest honor for you to trust us to launch you into space. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you, and we trust that all the science and work you're about to do will continue to move humanity further towards the stars. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the ride, and thank you for flying on Falcon 9. Please send our regards to Crew 7, and make sure to remind them you just wanted to be fashionably late. I'll hand it off to the launch director for a few words. Dragon LD, hope the ride was as awesome as a Cybertruck. Have a safe journey to the space station, and we look forward to see, seeing you when you get home. Thank you for flying SpaceX. SpaceX, oh my goodness, what an incredible ride to orbit. I'm both glad and not glad that you ha don't have a copy of our ICS. The cheers the whole way up are incredible. A big thank you to SpaceX for incredible instructors. Tyler, I'm talking to you and your team right now. Incredible instructors, engineers, and operators. They're the reason we are now safely in orbit. A thank you to NASA, Roscosmos, CSA, ESA, JAXA, who work together to make the International Space Station work for us all. And, of course, big thank you to my family, friends, and mentors who are the reason we're here today. Over to you, Mike. Yeah, hey, Eric, uh, just to let you know, it's kind of like a roller coaster ride with a bunch of really excited teenagers. Just want to mention the, uh, the NASA community is just a, a really warm but steely eyed family that does amazing things. And it, it kind of hugs you, but it pushes you into the unknown while watching your back. It's really been an incredible place for me to grow over these past uh, 30 plus years. And now I'm really honored to fly this new generation spaceship with this new generation crew. Thanks to my own family for tolerating my otherworldly habits. Uh, thanks to NASA for being the backbone of exploration that, uh, that we are. And just thanks so much to our friends and colleagues at SpaceX for the awesome ride. It's great to be back in space again. And uh, I would like to second Mike and Matt's words. I'm super excited to be here. And, um, you know, I need a... And the words that come to my mind is that I'm so grateful and I'm thankful for everyone who uh, got us to this point. There's no way we would have been able to do this without all the people, from all the instructors, from all the people supporting on the ground, to the people, the folks in the kitchen who kept us fed and moved out at SpaceX. You know, I just I'm so grateful for everyone, and I just want to give a big thanks to my um family and friends who came from all over the world to see this. Thank you for supporting me through all the, all the days of um, waiting to get to this point. Thank you for everything. And I want to give a shout out, a quick shout out to my sisters who couldn't make it, Brenda and Patty. And then I'd also want to give a nod to Syracuse who supported me through everything. And I am in a New York state of mind right now. It is amazing. Thank you for everything. Warm greetings to everyone from the orbit. I would like to 
express to you uh, gratitude to Roscosmos, NASA, ESA, JAXA teams, and all who took part in preparation and implementation. A separate shout out to my family and friends. Thank you for your support. My son, Sereza, Vlad, Sasha, be good. Kuzbas and Musti, see you soon. Всех тепло приветствую с орбиты. Выражаю огромную благодарность коллективу Роскосмоса, НАСА и САДАКСа и всем без исключения причастным к подготовке и реализации нашего полета. Отдельный привет передаю своей семье и близким. Спасибо вам за поддержку. Сыновьям Сережа, Влад, Саша, будьте молодцами. Кузбасс, мужки, до встречи. Dragon, we copied all, and we see the vehicle chasing down the International Space Station on orbit. Uh, nose cone opening is in progress. We saw nominal dehumidifier activation and service section Draco checkouts. With that, you're go to raise visors. And uh, I've got one final note. We have a tradition on board this spacecraft for its travelers to bring a small token, a zero-G indicator, if you will, to clearly demonstrate the, the free-floating nature of objects traveling in orbit around the Earth. And I wonder if you've brought anything fitting that description. Well, you should ask. <laughs> oh, man. So per tradition, we, of course, have a zero-G indicator. It's already been deployed. The significance of our zero-G indicator is not, not actually what it is, but who chose it. Many parents around the world have jobs that take them away from their children and families for long periods of time to serve their communities, their country, and the world. No, sorry, families are a prime example, but many jobs, including our own, share this trait. The choice of the zero-G indicator was given to my daughters to represent the sacrifice that children everywhere make while their parents are serving away from home. We chose a stuffed family dog, and she is free-floating here today. Matt, we copied all good words. I think we don't have video inside the capsule. We'll have to come back with you in a minute uh, for a video of that stuffed dog. No worries, Big. So right now on your screen, you do have that initial video of nose cone deployment. And again, the nose cone is opening to expose those two sets of hooks that Dragon will use to autonomously dock, dock with the International Space Station. Of course, loved hearing that crew's description of their zero-G indicator, and we're standing by for those views. Zero-G indicators really do become an important symbol of microgravity flight and the communities behind each mission. So for those of you following along, you'll know that our first zero-G passenger was Little Earth on demonstration mission one. Here's Little Earth on board Dragon on that DM-1 flight and later on board the ISS. Today, just five years later, we've reached 50 people flown to space. From zero G to 50 in just five years is pretty incredible. And of course, here in Hawthorne, I actually have the real Little Earth that went to space safely back on Earth with us here in Hawthorne. Little Earth is a celebration of zero gravity indicators, an essential component of space missions that help mark the transition into zero G. From Yuri Gagarin's famous pencil to modern indicators like Little Earth and demonstration missions to Tremor the Sequin Dinosaur, zero gravity indicators have become a way for all of us to connect with and celebrate human spaceflight. Human spaceflight has come so far in the last five years. SpaceX has launched nine human spaceflight missions on behalf of NASA and four commercial astronaut missions. That's a total of 50 crew members to space since 2020, 34 on behalf of NASA and their partners, and 16 commercial astronauts, including the first all-civilian mission to space and the first all-private passenger mission to the International Space Station. 
In addition to flying people, SpaceX also enables researchers the opportunity to fly critical science to orbit. SpaceX and Dragon carried over a thousand research experiments to and from low Earth orbit and the International Space Station and transported over 300,000 pounds to and from the station since 2012. Researchers from around the world use the space station to address complex human health problems on Earth, studying disease formation, testing drugs and diagnostic tools, and examining the inner workings of the human body. At any one time, the station hosts hundreds of investigations spanning every major scientific discipline from physics to microbiology. Every mission yields critical research and learnings that help make life both on Earth and in space better. From DNA sequencing to 3D printing, studies on the space station test a variety of technologies, systems, and materials that will benefit life on Earth Dragon and SpaceX. be needed for future long-duration exploration TDS missions. Yes, and Ord Volkhead Draco checkouts, and we see an upcoming burn in 23 minutes, 2-3. Getting great views of crew eight on board their capsule there and standing by hoping we might get a shot. There is their zero G indicator. Loved hearing the crew's description of who chose this, uh, who chose this animal and why, and everything that it means to them, to their mission, and obviously the community standing behind each of these four astronauts. And in addition to that, we heard some great words from the crew expressing their thanks and excitement to be on orbit. Really great to see them successfully on their way to the International Space Station. We had a successful nose cone deploy as well as those Draco checkouts. Everything continuing to go really smooth. So for now, we're going to end our coverage from here in Hawthorne until we pick back up with our docking coverage in about 26 hours. So for now, we're going to hand it back over to Megan and Raja at Kennedy Space Center to wrap up today's launch coverage. If you're just joining us, welcome to Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where we just watched Crew 8 lift off from Launch Pad 39A. Three NASA astronauts and one cosmonaut now en route to the International Space Station. I'm Megan Cruz. This is NASA astronaut Raja Chari, and we got to see an incredible launch. What a clear yeah, night. that was amazing. Um, Dragon SpaceX. Cabin environment looks good for suit doffing, and we'll take the camera external here in just a sec. Uh, your go for 4.012 suit doffing. And that's the question you were, we were just talking yeah. about before we got back online was uh, when are they going to actually start doffing Shaffer, their suits? Shaffer, Shaffer to go, 4.012 suit doffing. And so you heard the calls there. So first they wait for the nose cone to get open. They wait for the Dracos to be safe, um, which was the, the launch escape system. And then once they've verified the cabin atmosphere is good, that's when they can take off their suits. And as you heard them say, they're going to take the cameras external because basically they're taking off their, their space suit. Um, and it's pretty sweaty. Uh, <laughs> you've been laying on the back for a while. Um, yeah, but you can hear, hear in all their voices the, the excitement. And like you said, what an amazing night down here at the Cape. It was super clear. You and can see. And Dragon cameras are exterior. You could actually see the staging, um, and it was happy external. Amazing view, and I uh, got to see the first stage come back. So it was a super clear night, and we got to say, see the second stage turn into just a very faint star all the way at Seco. Yeah, and it's great to see some friends launch of yours. You're really close with Matt and Mike, I understand. Um, and really, it's nice to see a launch because we really waited till T minus ten minutes to know whether or not we were going to go. Yep. Yeah, and it's. Uh, you know, there's, it's always exciting when it comes to space flight, even more exciting when it comes to human space flight. And just great to see, you know, the team come up with a technical solution, look at all the data. Uh, as you heard them keeping the, the crew informed, like we talked many times tonight, the core is the person and the, the Capcom that they are talking to. Mm -hmm. But there is literally hundreds of people talking on loops and making engineering decisions and um, trying to go back and look at analysis data. And so a great uh, testament to the team tonight to pull all that data together. Um, as they always do. Yeah, and to make sure that they're safe uh, at launch and also reentry. So great to see the launch again. And once they get to the space station, they're going to have a hand in some incredible science investigations. And here's Jasmine Hopkins with more on that. Thank you so much, Megan. That's right. We saw another beautiful, uh, spectacular launch from here on the Space Coast. And joining us now is Dr. Xi from Emory University to talk about Project Eagle. So Dr. Xi, what is Project Eagle? 
Our goal is to investigate uh, the impact of space microgravity on human heart micro tissues. These tissues are generated from stem cells and they are a potential source of cells for cardiac regeneration. One challenge is that these heart stem cells are largely immature, meaning that they're not as fully developed as the heart cells in our body. So we are trying to find ways to push these cells to, de to develop further um, because the transplanting immature cell could actually increase the risk of uh, complications. The good news is that we found this uh, um, heart muscle cells become more mature on the ground-based simulated microgravity. And we would like to confirm that observation under real space microgravity. Right, so we're kind of taking what we've learned here on Earth and seeing if we can apply it in space. So with that in mind, we've been studying heart health in space for quite a long time now. So is Project Eagle going to tie into any of the other research we've already done? Great question. <laughs> yes, um, uh, actually our experiments build up on several interesting uh, studies uh, on the space station, um, including our own. Uh, for example, on the uh, space station, heart stem cells uh, or precursor cells grow faster than under uh, standard gravity. So in our new experiment, uh, we would like to learn if uh, the beating heart muscle cells can develop further and become more mature under space microgravity. Right, so yeah. we're kind of taking that, uh, that research to the next step there. And of course, that's really important because we're looking at going even deeper into space, but actually is, you know, things like Project Eagle, could that actually help us on Earth? You know, what we're learning in space for our heart, could that benefit our heart health on Earth as well? That's good, another good question. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we hope to learn, um, identify the molecules or conditions uh, that can um, be helpful to pr promote the maturation of heart cells because mm -hmm. that could help us develop new strategies to push uh, the cells uh, become more mature on Earth. More mature heart cells are more um, reliable for repairing damaged heart mm -hmm. and those more, more mature heart cells are also useful for develop uh, new medications mm -hmm. to treat patients with heart disease. Right, right. Yeah. So it's great to see, you know, we're taking it in space, also benefiting our life here on Earth. Thank you so much, Dr. G. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Of course. All right, Megan and Raja, back to you. All right, we're about to wrap up our coverage here, but I want to take one last social media question because this one is super cute. This one is from a four-year-old, Robbie, and he wants to know what will the crew do to pass the time on the way to the space station? Well, well Robbie, ho hopefully your parents are typing for you and you don't have your own social media account <laughs> as a four-year-old, but uh, it's actually probably the best time uh, both at the beginning of the mission and at the end of the mission um, because on the ISS, uh, your timeline down to five minute increments, increments so you're going, going, going. Uh, so this time uh, in the Dragon on the way up and the way down is kind of the time to honestly look out the window, um, enjoy the fact that you're in space, uh, for all of us, uh, we have trained and spent most of our life getting ready for those moments, so actually getting to, to savor that and enjoy it. Um, and you heard uh, Mike Fair talk about being able to look, you know, he said it was like being in a roller coaster with a bunch of teenagers. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, it sounds like this a lot of joy in that capsule right now. Um, now, on the serious side, they are starting, they'll probably be de getting, uh, working with the cameras, uh, taking some Earth observation photos, uh, things like that. Um, but it's mostly just starting to get the cargo ready so that when they do dock, uh, they can be ready to go. They'll have to now start worrying about the rendezvous timeline, so they'll be monitoring the burn. So each time there's a phasing burn to get them closer to the space station, they'll be monitoring that and preparing for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when it gets time to do the actual rendezvous, uh, they'll get back in their suits. Um, and then start monitoring the systems and being ready to, to jump in for, for anything that's off nominal. So um, they do keep relatively busy. I was going to um, say, it so sounds like they're doing uh, a lot over the there's next... There's plenty to be done, um, but it is a nice chance just to, to decompress a bit and, and enjoy the fact that you're in space. And there's some that adaptation so that the ISS is a much bigger volume. Um, so it's actually kind of helpful to use the Dragon where you're confined. Uh, you're pretty clumsy at first. And so... Uh, you can't go very far without running into something and stopping. Oh. So you can use the dragon as sort of a like with training wheels. I get see. used to microgravity before you get on the on the space station and go so they can actually around. get out of their suits in these next right. So when you hours. heard them when you heard them say they could they could do the suit doffing procedure, they're absolutely unstrapping, taking the suits off, um, putting on some more comfortable clothes, uh, and probably depending on their timeline, they may immediately go to bed. Um, they may have some time to eat and then get up later. So it all depends on the docking timeline. Okay. Well, thank you so much for yeah, that insight. And Robbie, thank you so much for that question. That's going to do it for us here on NASA TV. But you can follow along with Crew 8's entire ride to the station by listening in to real-time mission audio. 
And you can check that out by scanning the QR code on your screen. Or if again, you're watching us on your phone, just screen grab the code and then you can click on it later. Now, Matthew, Michael, Jeanette, and Alexander are on course to arrive at the International Space Station around 3 a.m. Eastern time on March 5th, so Tuesday. On-camera coverage of docking and arrival will resume about two hours before on NASA TV. And that's really always fun to watch. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just the, the, the faces of the crew. I, mean, I think we showed some clips from earlier before, but uh, it's both exciting because they're coming onto the space station. And it's so bizarre to have trained so much at Johnson Space Center in the mock-ups and then see the real thing, and it's upside down or sideways, and just uh, your mind trying to take that all in. And I guarantee the smiles are going to be huge. As you saw, Laurel's excited to see them. Everyone's excited to see everyone. It's, it's, a, it's a really weird family reunion when it happens <laughs> in space, but it's uh, probably one of the most fun ones to have. Well, and of course, before we sign off from Kennedy, I want to thank Roger Tari for joining us, co-hosting his second launch with yeah. us. I hope you had a good time. I did, yeah. Okay. I, I, uh, I wore the jinx this time. So I thank you. I appreciate that. What we're going to do is sign you up for Crew 9. That's right. You heard it here, <laughs> folks. Crew 9, Roger Tari co-host. And a huge thanks to all of our guests for joining us today. But most importantly, thank you all for watching. And you can keep up with any updates on this mission using the online resources we're going to put on your screen right now. For everyone here at NASA and SpaceX, have a great morning or evening. It's still 1125. And we'll leave you now with a look back at highlights from suit, off, suit up to lift off. Inside the suit up room, where we see our three astronauts and one cosmonaut. And the point of this card game is so that the commander loses, to use up his bad luck. Here they come, Crew 8, taking their first steps outside before their journey to the International Space Station. Crew is departing from the Operations and Checkout Building across Kennedy Space Center to Launch Pad 39A. Walking over to get a good look at their ride to space. Commander Matt Dominic, Pilot Michael Barrett walking down the crew access arm. See, they, the techs are making sure their helmet is protected on the way in. Jeanette Epps, Alexandra Govenkin, our two mission specialists for Crew 8, walking on that sticky tape to grab anything before they ingress as well. We see four seats in the launch position. They're closing the hatch now. Full power and lift off. Of NASA Crew 8, go Falcon, go SpaceX, and go NASA. Endeavor ascends a beacon of human mission. 1.7 million pounds of thrust now propelling Falcon 9 and Crew 8. Vehicle is pitching down range. 